Hello and welcome, I'm Impact Frames and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to talk about SDXL Loras, how to make them. And here I have my character Safiro the Gunshu, which I made in Maya a long time ago and also make her in Blender. And what I did is pose her in different positions, different light situations and environments and make a data set out of it. You come here and see like the results for stable diffusion. I pick up even the shoes and the costume really well in the first training that I made. The only thing that is failing is a bit the face a bit and maybe the gun. The gun is very bad, but the rest is picking up really well. And I think the gun is just uh, missing a bit more pictures and that will be it. Um, when we have control net, this thing will be like super amazing to, to make characters that are like that you have a concept and you can do something like this. And in here I have another uh, Lora that I made that is a comic book style Lora. And what it does is all this hatching, like this black ins inside the, these striations in the abductor muscle that we have. This in the abdominals, the serratus coming here, really cool. The accentuation of the muscle. And here we can see more with Conan. We have Conan there. Hellboy. This inks in the rocks. Super cool, the blacks and the... And this is like a stable diffusion, a straight up generation. Yeah, this is a straight up generation from stable diffusion. And here is the same seed with my Lora. That Lora, this style Lora took me 30 minutes to make because it only had one repetition and 170 images, I think. So it took like about 500 steps and it was super quick to make with the Koya training. If we go here and see more pictures, let's go. We got Wolverine, Deadpool. Yeah. So we have here more images and the advantages of doing this is that you have you can create characters that you didn't even put in the training because this is like what I will do in my style so I have like a I asked for a green tentacle monster and it gave me this in the style of impact frame so that's almost accurate like my style that something that I will do so it's super amazing if you do it with captions for making to capture your style, your concepts and everything. So let's go into the, into the folders and explain a bit how the folder structure works. Here I have a training folder that I made and inside I have an image folder and inside that image folder I have the, the folder with the image data. So in here I have 350 images with different parts of the concept, like I have the boots from different angles, the, the gun from different angles, the face with different expressions, the, uh, profile pictures, three quarter view, over the head view, and many different uh, views for the full body shots, like I have three quarter views, side views from the back, yeah, and the gun, the same for the gun over the head. Even I have different type of framing. If you have a framing like this, which is like a mid shot over the shoulder view and more shots of cowboy shots and stuff like that. So that's for the type of images that you have to have different lighting situations. And in here we can go and check how the captures are made. So if we can look at the capture, it, it's only in one line and it ends end of file in this line, EOF. And we have full Kejiro Safiro Keiji, which is a Safiro detective or something like that. Gojira Blaster Gun. So every time that I write in the prompt Gojira Blaster Gun, it will take me to the gun of Safiro. So it's training that concept with that embedding and the style of impact frames. This style of impact frames is the reason that I could make that green tentacle monster. And for some concepts, maybe you don't need so many pictures because there is some sort of training already in the pre-train of, in the base training of Excel. So you won't, if you want to make like a Batman, it's already trained. But for something like Safiro that 
Excel haven't looked at it, so it doesn't have this training yet inside. So that's why we need to have a lot of pictures, different angles, and we need to care a lot for the captions too. And as you can see here in the image, we have four underscore Safiro Gigi, and four underscore will be your uh, repetitions. So if you put 40, it will be 40 repetitions. If you put one, it will be no repetition. So we have Safiro GG will be the concept that you are training. That will be like the trigger word. And Galactic Gonshu will also work as a trigger word. But the Safiro GG will be a stronger trigger word. And now we can see also the Excel comic one and see like we have the image folder and inside that we have one underscore and we don't have any text uh, files here, only images, because these images are the only thing that we are training. We are not training the text file in here. And that's why it was a lot quicker. For example, the Safiro GG took like four hours and a half or four hours, I think. And the Excel comic took 30 minutes. So that's the big difference. If you are training something like a style, you can get away with it. So to install Koya, you just go into a repo folder name and just copy this and put it in your hard drive and then uh, move into Koya SS and then just uh, double click setup.bat or just run setup.bat. The same for Linux is very similar. You just have to give it permissions and setup.sh and that's it. After that, you run it and you have your Koya thing. You, you run the GIF file and you get this, this user interface. In here, you will start with Dreamboot, but you just need to move into Lora, select Custom and Save Tensors. And in here, you just go into your Stable Diffusion folder. If you are training local and you already downloaded this, get the Excel base, open it. And it will be here and just select XDXL, okay? XDXL and you are done. Basically, now you have to just go into tools and to deprecate it and you get this thing. You can train the concept here, put your concept trigger word, select the class that you want to train. If you want to train into, into a character, an animal, a person, a woman, uh, something that you want to train here that's the class and then your regularization images you can multiply the regularization images if you render a couple of them or you just have a hundred of them that you downloaded somewhere you can repeat them too or you can repeat them here and this will create the folder structure that i was saying before it will create that folder structure in the directory that you select here and then you go into your folder tabs again, into your training, into your folders. And it will be here like this. And this I set it up all myself by hand. I had the image, the loras will go into X, Excel comic lora, Excel comic logs, and here the image for the image folder. And then you can, you need to have first the parameters. And for the parameters, we're going to select the 24 gig LOKR. I have something similar, which is this one, the training loader. And all I did was select uh, the batch size for four. You don't, if you are in a 1390, you cannot go over four here, but you can make up with it with the accumulation steps, the gradient accumulation steps. I select four and that way I will have something like 16 batch because what this is doing is separating the steps in different chunks, the batch and it's making four steps for each batch, so it's making 16 batch. And if you have, if you are training in a cloud computing, then you can opt this. If you are in a A100, H100, you can select, I don't know, 16 or something like that. You need to check until you are out of memory. If you go into a Slora's here, you can select text or none. You can put none. Don't use folder name. So you can use folder name if you want to use that as a caption, or you can just use your captions if you have. Like use mixed precision BF16, 
planning here floating point 16 and for the learning schedule i use cosine uh, another very good is polynomial i sometimes use polynomial but cosine for this one and prodigy prodigy with these settings they are written out here because i select another one but yeah these settings here so let me go ahead and select them here so they are in view as i was saying i have lokr four in the batch 10 in the epoch no news folder name prodigy cosine there's these settings for the smoothing of the gradient and no half is very important and the accumulation steps you can opt that to four if you have four in the batch maybe up to eight try eight before maybe it's enough uh, maybe it's okay to have eight uh, the secure the parameter will be four and then use exformers if you want to flip the image maybe for an extra, extra step there but you can do it with the flip image maybe and that's it that's basically all you need you can also have more here you can have a more rank to train to train them all in different parts of the model in, in a wider spectrum you can have 256 and that says like it will take more parts of the model more layers let's see if we put like in 32 32 is like the probably the minimum that you should go and that's what i use actually but 64 is a good number i think uh, for this 16 and that's all for the training that's all that you need to do i hope this video was helpful and please uh, subscribe and Thank you for watching. Bye bye.